So hey there, Toby. So we're gonna do jam number hey. two. We just we just we just did jam number one of this session. So we're gonna do another jam. Boy, it seems Let's like see. so long ago. It seems like a very long time ago. So jam number two has its own jam number two. Jam number two. So let's get some of these cards out of the way. So what we got here? We got, we're going to look at three different resolutions, three different premises, and then try oh, to create a moral on. on three different topics <gasps> and try to create a moral argument in 15 minutes. Wow. Okay. So those are my resolutions. These are my premises. Mm -hmm. This one might be a bit of a, a brain overload, but sometimes, sometimes that works for okay. the best. Got to try it. Um, so we're gonna gotta gotta love that brain overload. Okay, these are falling apart here, and these are my topics. Okay, so let's just readjust this here. Do that. You know. Okay, so just to recap, in terms of moral argument, what we're looking for is this kind of format. It's hard for you to read, so I'll just tell you that it's a vice. Right, vice leads, leads to, to bad thing. Virtue right. leads to a good thing. We're going to see if we can come up with a couplet that follows that that shape. Okay. All right. So the first thing is to look at some resolutions. So resolution number one, child labor keeps children off the streets. I can't argue with that. <laughs> Don't want them getting into trouble? Put them on the no, textile mill? absolutely not. Yeah. Yep. And have them blind and disabled by the time they're in their twenties. Oh, gonna start our timer. Didn't do that. Okay. No. Next one. Mm -hmm. Individuals must be sacrificed for the sake of the community. Well, that's child labor right there, isn't it? Yeah, you're you right. I mean, have should... our cheap disposable clothing. Then what's the point? And what's the point of a childhood? I mean, you just want to get through it and become an adult, right? So. What better way to spend your childhood than you know doing useful things rather than yeah. playing cowboys okay. and Indians and with dollies and stuff like that? I mean that's that's absurd, silly, absurd. Um, let's see if we can get this in there too. We are secretly relieved when friends don't succeed. Yeah, I mean that's a that's kind of a cynical one, but I guess we've all probably had that feeling of jealousy. Maybe not all of us. In fact, I have a friend who says mm. they've never experienced jealousy at all, and I find that pretty impressive. That seems um, extraordinary. I mean, it seems yeah. very <laughs> seems very unusual, but I guess it's possible. Um, mm. But that's not me. Mm. I have experienced jealousy before, and I and I can recall, mm -hmm. you know, this 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 actually makes me think of. Um, I, I'm never going to be able to spell this, but Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. Right, which is S -C -H so that's my really bad bad spelling. -E Schadenfreude. R E U D. -E. Oh. So that's supposed it, to be yeah. Schadenfreude, but that's the idea, right? That we we take some delight. Well, but Schadenfreude the... is taking delight in the misfortunes of others. It's not friends necessarily. This oh, is a very so this specific... is. Right, so this is a spe specific. So Schadenfreude type is broider. I mean, it's fine. It's but it, it's it's Schadenfreude is you know when you're watching a YouTube video and a person falls down a hole and you find it amusing, that it's not necessarily though it can also include enjoying when a friend gets a comeuppance or um, is knocked down a few pegs. But but Schadenfreude is not specifically friends being hurt. So if you do feel relieved secretly inside if mm -hmm. someone you're close to and you consider a friend doesn't do better than you let's say um mm -hmm. are they really a friend or are you really a friend hmm. i have to say that to i be mean it depends frank, if, if you're keeping it on the inside and you're still doing the outward show of support for them and they don't know the difference. <laughs> Is it that can still make you a friend? <laughs> I like that. It's sort of, it's like, yes, in my heart, I don't feel good about this, but I'm going to be yeah. no, I mean, a I, friend I know, to I, you. I've, I've experienced by... this relatively recently. 
and and you know certainly but but outwardly i was saying all the right things for the person and i do consider them a friend but i don't want them to end up being enormously successful which is a horrible thing to say actually yes so you're so you're without I, me being successful i guess is that i have to right? say this is not an uncommon feeling among writers that i know <laughs> it's like when they're all no, sort no, of no, competing no, for the same really the same yeah. vocation you know sort of like uh when a friend of theirs, yeah. you know, doesn't get the cushy job, they're like, oh, oh I feel so bad for but you. Then I'm I so know, sorry but, to hear that. You know, but part of it is because he's another writer, I know that he is also secretly happy when something I'm doing falls through. <laughs> so it makes it okay. So it's the grand there's, equalizer. There's no failure, failure is the grand equalizer. Yeah, exactly. Failure is the grand equalizer. You are absolutely correct. Okay. We're secretly relieved when friends don't succeed. Um, I mean, that would imply if if we were doing a good, bad thing, that doing that makes you a bad person, right? But I like the fact that you think that, you know, that that's redeemable, that, you know, if you were a bad person, you would feel that way, express it and be off with you. But you stick in there mm -hmm. <laughs> to to commiserate with the person, even though you're secretly pleased. Yeah, yeah that's and offer them advice that... for how not to do that the next time. So yeah. it's all... I know you're it's a weird. It's a weird mix, isn't it? You're an imaginary friend. <laughs> Gosh, that's horrible, isn't it? Oh dear. I gotta put that out oh, there dear. again. Oh, yeah. That came yeah. for those who didn't see the last jam. That came up in the last jam. So this. All is right. The so, or, but okay, we're trying to put it into these moral arguments. Yes, and we didn't even get uh, to. Let's see. We so we have we're other. In this case, honesty is the best policy, but lying gets you better results. Mm. Okay. Right. Honesty can't always be the best policy because otherwise everyone would tell the truth. I'm going to try this. It's a little different from a couple of, but that's fine. We can, we can be, we can be creative. We can, color outside the lines. Honesty isn't always the best policy. People tell the truth when they can't the only people tell the truth only when they can't lie. Oh, okay, that's an interesting one. People tell the truth only when they can't lie. That sounds like a like a, one of our resolutions. Lies are not the opposite of truth. Okay. Lies do not have to be the opposite of truth. Well, that's getting the the shades of gray. There's so much beautiful gray out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the shades, the to, the multi shaded versions of gray. Um, Excavate okay. any truth, and you'll find a lie propping it up. Okay. Well, now you said honesty is always the best policy. That is a premise in my premise cards. I don't know if I can mm -hmm. find that a moment's notice, but I'm going to pull some premise cards out. Okay. Um, this one, okay. Jealousy destroys itself on the object of its affection. Hmm. Doesn't that hurt? Jealousy destroys itself. So that sounds like it's very nicely related, correlated to this schadenfreude. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. That that takes a moment to ponder. Um, so secretly, re well, but secret that's different. That 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 appears to be mostly romantic jealousy. Mm -hmm. There, I suppose it could. I suppose it could also be um, like a star is born, except mm. that destroys the person who's suffering from the emotion. That doesn't harm the object, particularly, right? Well. I can see a moral argument that says something about coveting. It's like almost like coveting thy neighbor's wife, or whatever. It's like coveting what the success, or coveting the, or inviting the, the, the downfall, or the, the yeah. lack of success of somebody, in order to make yourself feel better, will you know lead to something negative. So. 
the words that we have involved here is jealousy and success. Um, right. I wonder if there's any other words that can go into that mix. Um, Cause I have, let's see, what other things we have jealousy, success, friendship, um, I mean, it's undermining, isn't it? It's something sneaky too. It's like, um, I'm going to say covet because that's a, a feeling of wanting something. I mean, this, this to me suggests that you really, it's a, um, you're trying to make yourself feel better. So you have a, your own, you you have a insecurity in yourself, right? I mean, to be honest, I mean, that's mm -hmm. part of it, right? Because you're, if you felt really secure, then what difference does it make if this other person, you know, is successful in some way mm -hmm. that you would like to be? You don't it's feel true. like it's going to be something that's going to ultimately affect you it doesn't in other words it's not a zero-sum game the universe can have pie for everyone so if they get a slice of pie i might get a slice of pie you know it doesn't mean that i won't get a slice of pie just because they got it kind of a thing so right um uh let's see what else comes up let's see if we got any other interesting uh i mean there's there's a thing there individuals must sacrifice the good community there is that uh strange uh, coincidence, I guess, uh, from what or synchronicity of all the twenty-nine-year-old celebrities who die. That hmm. twenty-nine seems to be a pivotal year, and is that is that a, a these youngsters need to be sacrificed sometimes? These hmm. artists, James um, Dean, to to revive uh, a generation. Or well, that's to, the child child labor for art. <laughs> Yeah, they're yeah, the no, child I mean, labor. There's, the there's, there's, there's sort of something in there. Well, the the YouTubers are child labor because they're often mm -hmm. quite young. So uh, let's see, we got the YouTubers, child labor, um, the die young. Actually, I pulled up another premise which I thought was kind of interesting because it says excessive liberty mm -hmm. leads to slavery, and we have something about sacrificing for the community. Hmm. There's something about how, you know, if you are if you are a YouTuber, let's say, and you're successful, you feel mm. as if you have some uh some some freedom, some opportunity. Uh but in a way you are, you know, the property of Google. So you aren't really yeah. operating as an indiv you know, you're not that free. You're you're you you're following their rules to get their ads, the, that money and all the rest of it. So you are child labor. So you two are are child labor. So we do have child labor. Um, they're just not maybe six years old, although some of them can be quite young. Um, mm -hmm. This also makes me think of the herd immunity issue, right? Where right now in the pandemic, there's this tension between the economy and yeah. uh, the pandemic. And so the idea is, well, if we want to let the economy thrive, we've got to sort of get some more people out there. And if we do it in a managed way, we get herd immunity without, with, with, without too much death. And if we don't do it in a managed way, we get lots of death, but we'll eventually get herd, herd immunity, but maybe at too high a cost or something. So, mm. um, All right, so with two minutes left, it's going to be kind of tricky because it feels like there's always a lot of stuff in here. But we've got, we do well, have but it's, it's one. Kind we of, have it, one so in, in either case, it's, you know, we're happy to have individuals sacrificed for the good of the collective as long as they're not us or people we care about. Okay. So individual sacrifice for the good of the tribe uh, works 
best when it's not us. Not not the perfect moral argument, but it's sort of no, getting at something. That's, I, I like that. Yes, uh, it's it's great. So it's how do we how do we therefore shape the sacrifice that needs to be made so it isn't us. Hmm. Um, and we're still saying a sacrifice has to be made, uh, and it will be, but it's not going to be us. So how do you okay. maximize the not being us part? And therefore, in a state, in a sense, the state is being an imaginary friend to this class of people who they're quite happy to sell down the river, uh, as is the case with health professionals here, with our shortage of of gowns in particular that's now yep. starting to bite, um, and the fact that although we're not tracking the ethnicity of people suffering from it, it certainly seems to be from black, Asian and minority communities, the, the loss of the deaths seem to be higher. Yeah. I've been hearing that and again. Just, is that know, because just... they are medical personnel? Is it because they're porters? Is it because they're having to continue working? Yeah. I think it's the exposure of their <laughs> delivery or transport or anything else that they're doing. And those are the jobs that we have forced them into and they're still having to do them. So, so here's a moral Therefore, argument. With, with 10 seconds mm -hmm. left, I'm going to pause yeah. this so it doesn't like ring in my ear. But essentially, yeah. there is a moral argument that you're making about forcing, forcing the less It's kind of a community is only as strong as its weakest member. Okay. And but, a community that relies upon its weakest members to survive cannot survive. Or that, that, okay, not necessarily that, cannot, does not deserve to survive. Okay. A community, this is good. I like this as an issue. Um, a community, well, what if? It's not an issue, but let's say it's a resolution, in right. which case I'm using the wrong color. So I got to want to stick <laughs> well, stick to the just, right colors. Just get it down. Get it down. Get it okay. down. Otherwise, we'll All right. forget it. A community, okay, that relies on its weakest members to survive is what not worth doesn't deserve doesn't is not doesn't, worth surviving yeah okay isn't i mean obviously we can phrase that worth better. preserving there you go perfect preserving Okay, sorry for my terrible handwriting. Mm -hmm. So that one's interesting. And that, to conclude, I have thought of something just quickly. A moral argument, mm -hmm. vice leads to bad, virtue leads to good. Forcing the less, mm -hmm. forcing, okay, let's try this again uh, so okay. we can read it. Forcing the, oh, let's put it over here. Forcing the underprivileged, I'm going to say, Mm -hmm. to sacrifice for, um, you know, you know who. <laughs> that's, that's okay. um, undermines uh, our stability, I guess. This is very wordy, but, you know, um, mm -hmm. but recognizing our heroes, our true heroes, um, makes us stronger. Okay, so that's not a very good, not very well written, but it's a bit sort of like if we live on the backs of slaves, we become, you know, slaves ourselves or something. It's some 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 idea mm -hmm. like that. And so the moral argument is a uh, pointing out that you you know, like you're saying, like you become the worst of your nature. You become the worst that you can be by mm -hmm. making this exception and living off the backs of those other people. So, all right, I, I, I will take some of this, write it up and, and, and redraft slightly, but I think that's good. That okay. worked out well. We got ourselves some yeah. moral arguments and uh, I would say that was a little more intense mentally, but I think... Um, 
we had some good stuff good. Come out of it. All right. Yes. So 